Welcome to St John's Leatherhead. In today's news, we will be discussing mental health issues in teenagers. Brexit, we will also be talking about an England hockey star and how to stay fit and healthy. Also travel band and train strikes. There will also be an expose on Emma Watson and we will talk about the dangers of headphones. Hello, my name is Sophie and welcome to BBC School News. Today our first topic is sport. The first thing we're going to talk about is Fulham Football Club and how to keep healthy and fit as sports players. This is, this is our teacher, Miss Ball, an ex-Fulham woman player. Thomas is going to be interviewing her. How many hours on average did you exercise per week? Um, good question. Probably not as much as I should do. I would probably say... When I was playing last season, I would have done probably about maybe about four and a half hours a week. How would your life change from being a football player to a teacher? Um, Is it easier or harder? Well, I've always played football alongside the what I've been committed to, so whether it be school or teaching or when I was at university so I've always played alongside it so it's always been quite a good escape a bit of a release of energy um, a good outlet to let go and to exercise it's good to keep my keep my mind healthy um, it's a hobby as opposed to something that I would do professionally because I'm not I wouldn't be good enough to do that but um, yeah it's, it's, it's really good it's a good escapism definitely Thank you uh, for taking your time. No problem, Thomas. You're welcome. This hard, hard. It is very hard being a football player, or any other sportsman. You have to sacrifice a lot of things, and you have to go through a very strict diet to be part of the team. One third of 10 to 11 year olds are overweight. This is horrible. And one fifth of three to four year olds are also overweight. This, is, this needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed quick, quickly. Help your child for not being overweight. Achieve something in sport. You need to keep fit and healthy in practice. To do that, you have to also drink lots of water, fruit and vegetables. Louise is going to be interviewing England hockey player Lucy. Go. Today I'm going to be interviewing Lucy. She's just been elected for the England hockey team and I'm going to be asking her some questions. So, were you in the A team when you first started here at St John's? Uh, yeah, so ever since I started St John's um, I've been in the first team but when I, when I first came I was in the, um, the under, I think it's the under 14s that you first go into when I was in full form and I was in the A team for that and then as I got into the old years, I get went into the first team, and that's you know how I progressed from there. How hard do you have to train now you're in England hockey? Well, quite a lot. There's quite a lot of uh, camps and things. So um, there's whole day camps where you you get there at uh, get there about nine o'clock in the morning. You leave about five o'clock, and there's lots of like running and stuff involved. So you have to one of the fitness things is ten pitch lengths of a hockey pitch. Which so there's a lot of gruelling fitness in it, and you do get very tired. <laughs> so, what advice would you give us about healthy eating and how to stay fit if we have dreams to be in the England hockey team? I would say you know enjoy the sport first. You know you've got to really enjoy the sport of whatever you're going to do. You've got to enjoy it. But um, healthy eating wise, I would just say you know stay away from the you know fizzy drinks and all that. But you know in you've got to kind of have some stuff that you like in your diet. So you know just little and often you know with the unhealthy foods but yeah thank you for your time overall we have found out that you have to be very healthy to be uh, successful in your sports career <laughs>
that person was you, how would you feel or act? Well, I mean, absolutely shocking. I mean, to think that it could be it could be myself or yourself or anyone else walking around with those headphones. If they could catch fire at any time, if you were asleep, very concerned in, indeed. Are you concerned about taking your headphones on a plane? Definitely. It said that the headphones were battery powered and did not tell us what brand it was. Do you have any idea what type of brand this could have been? Well, many companies make headphones. I'm not sure it's for me to comment. It is said that the woman was asleep during the explosion. The headphones were powered by lithium power batteries. Do you think this is the reason of the explosion, or just overheating because it was being used a lot? I mean, if they were being used an awful lot, then overheating uh, could occur, but that's something that definitely they should have tested for before in the manufacturing process. So certainly they shouldn't be exploding or catching fire whilst the person's actually using them. Thank you. That's all we have time for now. Thanks very much. Goodbye. especially in the Champions League, where Prep Guardiola's lost to Monaco and how it happened. President Donald Trump has tried to control the amount of citizens from six mostly Muslim countries coming to the United States. He has tried to do something like this before, but the judge de has declined it. This means two different states, one Washington and the other Hawaii, have banned this and two different judges. In Hawaii last night, Mr. Trump has been thwarted by the courts from proceeding in his campaign to control the amount of immigrants. Judge Derek Watson, appointed by former President Barack Obama, said that the state of Hawaii and local Muslim leader named Ismail Elipshik has brought a legal challenge. Both of them claimed that President Trump's policy targeted Muslims, meaning that people would be treated differently because of their religion. To support this, they quoted Mr. Trump's former call back in January 27th about the campaign for Muslim ban in his second week in office, which talked about blocking immigrants in seven different countries, such as Iraq, Iran, Sudan, Somalia, Lib Libya, Yemen and Syria, which led to a huge protest at airports. This time in Hawaii, Iraq was taken from the list of banned countries, dropped to previous indefinite on Syrian refugees and removed language that appeared to Christian citizens of mainly Muslim countries. The new order did not apply to travellers who, who already have visas. These changes appealed to the judges, but not Judge Watson. We will now pass on to Jamie's interview. Thank you. I was supporting Monaco because I think that French football is going to really benefit from this, this victory more than Paris Saint-Germain getting knocked out by Barcelona and that there's no representative. We've still got Leicester from England, but it'd be nice to have a representative from each of the Why do you think it has gone wrong for Pep Guardiola in the Champions League, considering he has never been knocked out? I think it's being in the Premier League. Previously he's been at Barcelona in a final both those teams dominate their leagues, mostly, maybe one or two teams in the, the Premier League, though, every game is a battle, every game can be won by either side. And it takes its toll on the team a lot more, and that's something that I hope we can experience before. Two more questions, Aaron. Do you think Leicester will get any further in the Champions 
I hope so. I mean, Leicester's performances in the Premier League have not been that good this season. And I think the reason for that is going to be that the teams in the Premier League are used to their tactics, but the rest of Europe haven't seen that and aren't preferred. So I hope that Leicester can go all the way. Okay, and last question. Do you think after the match, Man City could have done the miracle like Barcelona did to PSG? I mean, there was always the opportunity. They've got some great players. They've got Aguero, David Silva. But Monaco have been in such good form in the domestic league. Hi, my name is James and I'm here for the BBC News. As you can see, we are in St John's School in Leatherhead. Today I'll, I'll be asking a few questions about travel and homework. So, number one, is, is train strikes good or bad? Number two, is homework, is homework good for the brain when it's late at night? Good. We are about to see Mr. Vine, Mr. Noble, uh, and ask them a few questions about travel. We are now here, and we are going to ask Mr. Vine a few questions before following it up with asking Mr. Noble some. Yep. What's your favourite way to travel, and why? Well, I normally travel by car, but I like to travel by train. Uh, why I like to travel by train is because it gives you time to do things. You can read a book, whereas in a car you're always doing something. So it gives you think, time to think about things and do other things. Thank you. Why do you think train strikes happen? Uh, there's lots of different ways why, why train strikes happen. I think mainly because there's not enough money going into the infrastructure, so uh, not keeping them on top of the tracks, so track damage and things, so that's why the trains are not running all the time. Do you think trains are a good thing to travel in? I do. I think they're a really good thing. They're uh, cost effective, you can get lots of people moving at the same time, uh, keeps people off the roads, not so many cars on the roads, and like I said, it's a nice way to travel. Thank you. Favourite way to travel and why? I like flying. I think flying is, is uh, a real skill for some people, but it also enables me to get a long way away very quickly. Why do you think train strikes happen? I think train strikes are a function of the poor relationships between the management and the unions. If they sort out the management and the unions and get them round a the table, then fewer train strikes will happen. However, change, which is uh, an anathema to some unions, means that management and the unions become uh, at loggerheads with one another. Do you think trains are a good thing to travel in? I do, um, because you can get a lot of people moving in the same direction at the same time and therefore that reduces uh, the amount of traffic on roads, uh, but only if they work on time. Welcome to 6 o'clock news. Today's top story. Another Scottish independence referendum. And what will the outcome be for the Now over to our political correspondents, Sophia and Isabella, who will be interviewing Lucy Hill. So when the Hills referendum came out, so when they had the last um, referendum, they said that they would have a So back in 2014, I voted to remain part of the UK. I think it's a really strong union, and Scotland's not strong enough to stand by itself. Uh, if there were to be another Scottish independent referendum, I would seriously have to consider the arguments for it. So, what did you vote for Brexit? I've done a lot of work in Europe and abroad, uh, and I think the ties between the EU and the UK are, are strong ties, and I wanted to remain part of the, the EU, uh, which sadly didn't go our way. That's a tricky question. 
because I've already moved down south, I've made my choices. I no longer live in Scotland. And if there were to be another referendum, I'm not entirely sure if I'd be able to vote in it. Uh, the fact that there's talk of a second inter in, uh, independence referendum is a sign that the people of Scotland aren't happy and aren't happy that they are possibly about to be taken out of the EU against their will. Thank you. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. Emma Watson has been a victim of hacking. She says to have private photos of her of her photos stolen and posted on the internet for everybody to see. The famous Harry Potter and Beauty and the Beast star has also said that she has previously been threatened in 2014 with the leak of bad images of her speech she gave on the gender equality as a UN ambassador for women. However, she is not the only celebrity to have had this happen to her. Fellow actors Amanda Seyfried and Jennifer Lawrence have shared it. What do you think about Emma Watson's photos being hacked? Do you think she's overreacting or do you think she's doing the right thing and should take legal action? Ooh, when you're putting photographs out there for the public, you can, it's, you can, it's, well, ooh, in my opinion, I think, yeah, she's probably right taking these action, but on the other side, she's putting herself out there and all her photographs out there for the public to see, so. Would you agree with the public that this is a bad matter, or do you, like, would you agree or I agree, it is my point. Um, thank you for your opinion, it was very interesting. That's all we have time for, for for now. Check the BBC's website for more stories like this.